Uh, good evening. This is the Northampton Public Works Commission meeting. It's Wednesday, December 2nd. It's 5.30 p.m. And uh, not on the agenda, but worthy of some discussion tonight is the very recent announcement that our DPW Director, Ned Huntley, is moving on to a job in the town of East Hampton, city of East Hampton. Yeah. So um, I thought we ought to take a minute and acknowledge all that Ned has done for us in the city and all the work that he's put in. Um, I was, I've known Ned for quite a while. In fact, Ned uh, was sort of an instigator in getting me on the board with the promise that the meetings would only go an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in the landfill days when um, in the middle of the summer it was dark when we left. So, uh, oh dear. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I never saw much remorse on your you face. Miss the most public hearings, so that Yeah, to well, I got. I, I was here for some that weren't much fun, but yeah. but anyway, Ned, uh, I wish you the best. I know the commission does, and uh, uh, we certainly appreciate all that you've done for us and for the city. You're more than welcome. And I appreciate all the support you give me over the past years. It's been wonderful. Um, East Hampton does have a. A board of Public Works and they act as water and sewer commissioners, so we'll be falling back into that old norm again. Interesting. Very good. I think we should say the board. We spend more time working with him as board members yeah. than we have as commissioners. Yes, for sure. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's it a board thing. Distinctly, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, you guys have been a huge support team for me here for a number of years, and I've always appreciated it. And uh, thank you. I look forward to going to East Hampton and doing something a little bit different. Private ways over there? They have a lot of private ways. <laughs> 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 private ways. So, um, we have a surprise <laughs> to celebrate. We hope you like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, well, who can not like this? Um, I don't know. Let's put it on here. We're going to have to have a really fast meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see why we moved um, the acknowledgement of your departure up to the beginning. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> we were going to melt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, you're in charge. So, anyways, it came up rather suddenly, unexpectedly, and things moved very quickly. And I said, to take the opportunity to go to East Hampton. It's it's a little bit smaller than North Hampton. It's a they set up a little bit differently. Not much. It's a much smaller department. And. Um, I know the city engineer and the director are very excited about having me come on board. So, it's time to move on. I thought the comments in the newspaper article were nice and a, and a good explanation of how yeah. this actually gets you back to what you really like to do. Yeah. Take a step back. Slow down a little bit. So no one ever told me. <laughs> okay, you have to use your knife. I need one of these weapons. Yeah. I don't want to chip people, but I also realize that this is an hors d'oeuvre. It's an hors d'oeuvre? Yeah, because well, none of us have that I don't want any oh. Well, you know the scent. Eat dessert first. Yeah. I'll take the very same And then again at the end. That's pretty slim. Oh, they're getting thicker. Uh, When's your birthday? <laughs> Here. September. Here now. Oh. Thank you. That's right, Jack. Yeah. Moving yeah, sports yeah. along. I actually have spoons if anybody wants. Thank you. Mmm. So we actually do have a meeting tonight. <laughs> Are you here for public comment? I'm here for the Hampshire Gazette. Oh. oh. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, give her ice cream. Give her ice cream. Give her ice cream. I offered. <laughs> ice cream first, business last. <laughs> but you have a freezer here, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Now, if you look at this, it some way reflects the sewer line replacement that's happening on Warner Street. It's really good. I'm passing my time. Would you like a piece of it? You sure? Yeah. yeah. It's you can too tell. much to write in. Plenty. And I'm happy to go put it in the freezer. 
do it. Come. No, I'll do it. Right. I'll finish what you're doing. Oh, you're it really good. While you're cutting, Mike, I guess I'd like just to say a few words. I've been here about 10 years, and the reason I'm here is because of Ned. Um, I was a oh. I was a consultant with the city um, before I worked here, and Ned was a client of mine, and really enjoyed working with him on a number of projects at the landfill and some other things, and. Um, when George A. retired and Ned became director, that opened up the city engineer position and we started having some discussions with Ned. We met a few times to talk about the position and all the challenges that the city faced and the work that needed to be done. And I live in the city and um, was interested in at least talking to him about it and he, he did a lot to, uh, was obviously very successful in conv convincing me to come to work for the city and I'm very thankful that he did because it's been a uh, a great joy, I think, over the last 10 years working on all the challenging things that um, that we've worked on together and the things that we've accomplished and really started with the water treatment plant, which Ned was spearheading when I came on board. I helped him manage the construction of that project, which was sort of one of the largest projects probably in the public works history here in the city. So working on that and then working on the landfill issues and getting that closed and kind of moving forward with solid waste management the stormwater utility and, you know, when I, the day I started, Ned was always <coughs> pushing for planning for the future for the department and was really spearheading the idea of doing these asset management plans and the water system and the comprehensive wastewater plan, which we've talked quite a bit about with the board and with the commission. Um, because those plans really do set the roadmap for the city for the future. and. <laughs> We're a very interesting city because we have so much old, old infrastructure and finding a, a way to update things in a smart and cost-effective way really takes a lot of planning and solid, prudent evaluation and that was something that Ned always stood by and I tried to support that along the way and um, I think he's leaving the city in a very good place from all the work and planning that he wanted to do and the, the stage is set. Um, I think. I'm always very proud of the things that we've accomplished here at the department with the, the people that we have in the different divisions and how much we work we get done. And uh, you know, I think that's a, a great credit to the things that he's accomplished when he's been here. And uh, kind of a, a sad day to see him leave because we have, you know, we have done a lot and we have a lot more to do. But, and all I get is a piece of ice cream on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can merge the two cities. <laughs> well, thank you for those very kind words. Um, that was one of my goals coming on as director, was creating these long-term asset management plans for the city, the next director, the mayor, the city council, and so on. And we've seen a lot of changes in the past few years here, um, for mostly for the good, I think. Um, Jim has been invaluable to me, along with the other staff that's been, have been hired. I've been blessed with a great previous Board of Public Works, now Public Works Commission been very supportive over a number of different topics over the past 15 years. It's been a real interesting time for me here. But um, when this thing came up in East Hampton, the opportunity, I I talked to the director and the city engineer about it, and they were very excited about having me come on board. They're actually just starting looking at asset management plans. They actually have a, a work co a project going on with time bond and Kleinfelder for doing integrated water resources, which combines everything into one plan. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to put my expertise into that with them also and help them along with that and also get back to some of my roots. I mean, the city engineer still does a one-man survey. He does plans, he does specifications and kind of brings me back a little bit and you know, this, this will keep moving forward. I don't know who the next director will be, but I'm sure it will be a long decision made by getting him, in, him or her in here. Mm -hmm. It's a great community. I love being here in Northampton and I Look forward to going to East Hampton. It's going to be a fun ride. Mm -hmm. Good for you, man. Thank you for all your support. I appreciate it. Well, I suppose. Oh, you do? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to um, say that I, one of the things I've loved in, over the few years is watching what good care that you take of employees. And that is so critical to growing employees and positions and keeping the department stable and I think it's terrific. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Shall we move on to the more mundane? <laughs>
Uh, we do have uh, an opportunity for public comment, but seeing as how you're here to observe and not comment, is that correct? We can move past that. Um, next on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the October 28, 2015 Public Works Commission meeting. Second. Is there any discussion on these minutes? I thought they were perfect. Yes, they were very Ooh. good. Oh, uh, All in favor? Sugar down to my head. Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, we have no new business, no old business, but we do have a number of items under informational, starting with contract update. <coughs> Do this, Ned? Well, Jim was going to do this actually, but he just <laughs> left the room. Oh, here he is. Oh, here he is. Good. Thanks. You can't see it though. I don't have one of those, and I printed everything I've I'll done. Read, I'll read each item. I have yeah. doubles of everything, yeah. but not that. Somebody missing anything? Well, I copied it at home, and then I have my own copy. Another one here. No, that's okay. I'll take. Oh, you need it. Two. Minutes. First, That's minutes. Yes. Yeah. First oh, one is, is we're doing, yes, we're doing <laughs> contract <laughs> updates. Uh, contract. So I'll read it for Jim and he can speak okay. about it since he prepared for this. Bliss Street Water Main Replacement Resident Services. Um, so this is a contract with Bob Melstrom on um, the paid for out of the Water Enterprise Fund. Um, we have a project that we opened up bids recently to um, replace the water main on Bliss Street. We've had uh, we had two breaks in one week at Bliss Street about three weeks ago. Um, it's an old um, AC pipe that's in very poor condition. We're having difficulties with it. We've had four breaks in two years. We had two breaks in one week. We're a little concerned about trying to make it through the winter with this pipe. It's in such poor condition. So we uh, we worked on a project to get that out to bid. We opened up bids. Bob Melstrom's role in this would be construction um, inspection inspector when the project starts. So. That's what that contract is. The contract below that is for uh, the same project, but for engineering services that will be provided by Tate and Howard. So they, were, they did the design plan, helped with um, the bidding, and they'll be helping with construction administration when the project starts. And is that still scheduled for now? We were hoping to get it done now. Mm -hmm. um, before the weather turns to the point where we can't do any more construction. Mm -hmm. The weather's been pretty good actually so far, mm -hmm. late fall. Um, we have a lot of, actually have a lot of different construction things going on right now. So we're, we're hoping we can get it in to avoid the need to go out and do repairs in the middle of winter on a pipe that we know is in very poor condition. I can write, I can read this surprisingly well. I'm, I'm sure yeah. I have been uh, the next contract is with AJ Virgilio um, on Route 5 flood control and stop log improvements. So we we had Time Bond, a local consulting firm, do um, inspections of our flood walls at the at Route 5 and across the railroad. So up by the bowling alley, right? We have mm -hmm. two flood walls there, um, and they were in need of repair. Um, the stop logs that we have in the shelters that are out there are original equipment that date back to like 1939 or 1940. Um, many of them are warped <coughs> and, and poor condition. So this contract with the Virgilio, part of it involves um, having new stop logs made to replace the ones that we have. So it's replacing some of that original equipment. And then the rest of it is related to metal fabrication work necessary to repair base plates in the road and um, the equipment that we need to construct the, to, to be able to construct these um, stop log walls. Um, so that work is ongoing. Most of it, they're going to continue to work. Some of it's metal fab work and some of it's um, work at a, a lumber yard will do and most <coughs> things are happening as we speak right now. So um, that's the contract with Virgilio. Uh, the next contract is with RJ Forbes Painting for a water treatment plant concrete equalization tank repair. We had some significant spalling um, and degradation of an, uh, con it's a concrete tank outside the building um, where discharge water from the plant goes into the equalization tank and from there it goes into the sludge uh, lagoons. 
we had um, some spalling and some degradation of the concrete down, you know, up to maybe an inch or so more, and it's getting, it's, it's actually in a condition where it warrants a repair. So we worked with AECOM and their structural people to come up with some repairs. Um, we did bid that work. Obviously, we have a contract um, with Forbes. We're working with them. We're starting to lose the temperature window, some of the <coughs> materials that they would use to replace the, um, or to repair the tank are temperature sensitive, so we may end up having to wait until the spring until it gets a little bit of warmer to do the work, but that's, that's what that project is. Can I ask is. a question? Of course. Um, I remember before and after the plant was built, and it seems to me you know, uh, that we've had some different problems happening. Um, and I just wonder, for instance, with this one, is this something that should should have been happening this close to its opening, or you know that it, it's a fairly new plant? Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> things do break down. Um, no one is at fault for the for the um, for the need for the repair, so we had no recourse really other than to to repair. Mm -hmm. The assessment that was done by the structural engineer for AECOM was actually quite detailed when they discussed the concrete mix that was used and the type, types of things that happened that caused some basic delamination of the surface and other degradation of the concrete. I'm no, I'm no expert in this area, but it made sense to me what they were trying to mm -hmm. what they were trying to describe. And were, at this point, those contracts are done and long gone. We're outside warranty period, mm -hmm. so um, I would like to see everything last a really long time to the point where mm -hmm. we don't have to repair it. But the people on the on the commission will know that we've replaced some very expensive automated valves and some other things that have been, you know, it's a little disappointing to me that some of the things just don't last the way that you'd like. Mm -hmm. But we're hoping that with this repair that the, this particular tank will be in good shape for a long time. Okay, thank you. Um, the next contract is uh, an annual contract for catch basin frames and grates and manhole frames and covers. Um, and it'll be paid for out of the sewer and appliance fund. Uh, the next contract for 52000 and change is with Verizon for um, utility work related to um, the Pulaski Park project. And it's a project associated with the park, which involves taking all the utilities in the back of the park and, and moving them underground. So it was a condition of the state grant that we received that any utilities that go through the park need to be put on the ground. I think we've talked about this in the past. We've had a couple of contracts come through. We're gonna, this was the first of the utility contracts, so the utility companies go out, they do the work they need to do, pulling wire and that sort of thing, and they send us a bill for, you know, they charge the city a fee to do it. And for all the work that Verizon is doing, um, they've indicated the cost is gonna be this $52,000 number. And includes setting a very, um, a new, a very large pole out there. It's a new pole. It'll be a new terminal pole for us. It'll be outside the park limits and uh, kind of a key piece of infrastructure there. Um, the next uh, contract with Microback Labs uh, is for sewer enterprise uh, money for lab sample analysis. So some sample analysis work that we don't do in house, we send out to a um, to an exterior analytical laboratory. And the value on that is $9,638. Um, the next contract on the list was a change order number one on the Pulaski Park construction job with uh, Mountain View Landscapes. Um, this um, change order was 2474 and it was for concrete related work. Um, there's some minor grade changes and in other integration of the park with the Academy, Academy of Music. There's a handicap ramp and some other things, some steps, some other things that were going on there. And as we started to excavate some of the areas, it became clear that there was going to be some additional work that would be necessary to make that, to make it work and make it right, and to repair some old um, concrete um, elements to the stairs and the ramp. So this first change order was for that work. Um, the next contract is with Alternative Recycling for Residential Food Waste Collection in the value of $24,999. ARS has been um, the company that's been providing food waste collection here at the transfer station um, since the beginning of the food waste collection program. So the contract was, was up and we went out to bid and um, they bid the same price as the previous contract. We've been very, very happy with their work and the program has been very successful. So. 
And has the amount composted increased, stayed the same, or decreased? I don't know the answer to that. I didn't have time to do the research. I can do it for the next meeting for you. I'm I'd be curious to know. I was keeping a, a closer eye on it when it was a pilot mm -hmm. project, right. um, but I'll have to talk to Dave Weather and Susan to see. Yeah, because this is the third year. Now. Right, right. Um, I use it myself, and I know the containers always busy. They're always full when they go on the back, so it seems like we're doing well. But um, it'd be nice to see the numbers. Yeah. Is that a unit price contract, Jim, where they get paid for what they do? Yeah, it's per tote. Okay. So based on the number of totes that they empty when they come, we keep track of that. Okay. Uh, the next contract with uh, with J Bates Construction is a time extension only for Phase Four landfill closure. We still had an active contract with J Bates, and um, there was some minor repair work that was necessary on uh, on the landfill. Uh, related to the gas system, so we had them go out there and do a little bit of work for us, and we needed a time extension on the contract in order to pay for it. And then the last contract is with um, Mansfield Paper, also from Landfill Enterprise Fund, thirty-one thousand seven hundred ninety-five dollars for the um, for the blue bags. So it was a uh, new contract for all the bags that we sell for the Pay as You Throw program. Questions about those projects? I don't know anymore. Commissioners have any? Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, next item is Pulaski Park update. So we have a we've got a number of updates here. The first one is Pulaski Park. Um, Mountain View is continuing to work. They're going to continue to do a lot of work until the weather turns for the worst. Um, if you go down frequently, you'll notice that we had Main Street sidewalk closed. <coughs> well, they demoed the existing sidewalk and put in, um, they put in a new, si a new sidewalk and a new stormwater drainage grade for us on Main Street, and that's going to direct the water into the park. Um, they've been doing other work related to planter boxes, so this is some concrete related work and granite um, installation work. Um, sidewalk and sort of work that's integral to the academy of music is being done now. One of the things that they're going to be working on in the next week is a sidewalk that runs along the academy because what we want to do is in the winter pull all, all the constri construction fencing away from the academy because there, there's emergency egress into the park. Right, So we want to move the fence, get this new sidewalk built so that will be um, it'll be separated from the park construction. We've been working closely with the academy of music staff and they've been very helpful in understanding with the things that we're trying to do. So that's been a very um, good relationship, I think. Um, next week, there's some underground drainage work that uh, Mountain View will be working on. Some electrical work um, also will be happening. So basically forging ahead with um, forming and concrete-related um, work and site prep work for the spring. So related to Academy, I, I ushered there on occasion, and I guess there was a problem with um, sewer? There was. You know, is it, it all related to the digging of this and <coughs> discovery or something else in turn? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. There's a very old, crazy sewer line that comes out of the academy, and I think there, there were very poor <coughs> records about it. My understanding is that the academy has had some problems with the sewer line in the past occasionally. Um, we were, were obviously working out there. I suspect that something that we may have done may have exacerbated a situation mm -hmm. that wasn't great to begin with. And it was a little unfortunate because it happened on the weekend and there were shows and, mm -hmm. and there were inconveniences. But that work, that work has been all fixed and repaired and the sewer line has been made safe for the future. I think we can all breathe easy. I was at the academy Saturday and I used the men's room knowing that <laughs> <laughs> we were in good right. shape. We were in good right. shape. <laughs> but it was unfortunate. I think it may have been related to something well, that we don't know. Was it related to the smell that, um, can you? Do you know about that? <coughs> the odor that permeated downtown um, last week. Last week, I, I actually was Thanksgiving. I was I could part of the day it was on Wednesday and Thursday. Apparently, you don't know about this. I don't. You do. The pollen. It, it, was, it was in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. you smell. And I I was I was <coughs> at the Manna Soup Kitchen, and I, when I came downtown in the morning, it was. But it was gone by the afternoon, so I just thought it was sewage treatment or something like that. 
Um, it's possible. I wasn't aware of. I actually wasn't yeah. aware of it, so I can't speak. Oh. For anything I say will be based yeah. on <laughs> nothing. nothing. <laughs> it suggested that it smells like the so mall. So I'm going to check on it and to see if there was any, any, uh, anything coming from the meadows that might have been related to. Uh, end of the year uh, fertilization because yeah. that was the, mm. well, that was the odor wow. that you were getting. Yeah, really, it did smell like the head. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that could be it. I mean, I just walk up and down to work here, and I walk by Smith Oak Fields. They've, they've got some manure applied to the field up there differently. Yeah, you smell on them. Well, that was a suggestion. It didn't Don't didn't say, it didn't <coughs> say that there was agreement on that because they weren't able to determine from what I read that that was uh, the source of it. But. Uh, okay. hmm. Couldn't Where have been too serious if you guys didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah, know. Where are our odor sniffers now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't call them back. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh I remember that. Down there. Yeah, I remember that too. I remember. We have specially trained people to do this. So uh, other than that, the, uh, the utility undergrounding work at, uh, related to the park is going quite well. Um, they've done a lot of the work in the roundhouse lot that, need, that, that was necessary. Some of the cleanup has happened there, so it's becoming a little more normal in the back. Um, they were extending some conduit up the slope and sending some other structures, and that, that work has gone well. Um, so that's an update. We'll just, we're, I'm just hoping that you know, if we continue to have good weather, we can get as much done as we can get done now, and then in the spring, we'll just be all the less necessary to get the project done. Pretty Do we exciting. have a projected completion date? We don't really. At the moment, um, Mom, you was talking about sometime in May. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be highly dependent on the spring, right? I mean, you get you never know what spring's going to be here. And if we have a warm spring early, they can get out there and get started and get done sooner. But if we have a lot of snow on the ground, it will slow things up. And then the only other uh, elements on the park, we're still waiting to hear. The state um, hasn't announced the park grant um, awards yet. Last year, the awards were. Um, were made in, in the latter part of October. And this year they haven't made them yet. I'm not sure what the delay is, but we're still waiting to hear on the $400,000 grant we for. Um, we did recently receive a $200,000 grant from CPA for work related to the um, utility undergrounding project. So it was money we needed basically to pay for the other utility companies that will send us bills, so National Grid, um, Five College Fiber, or some of the other utility companies will be sending bills to move their stuff underground. And that's about it on that one. Any more questions on Plastic Park? Move on to paving update. Um, Warner Brothers is demobilized from the city for the for the season. They pretty much come. Um, the project is almost done. They're all the paving was done. There's basically punch list related work that's being uh, will be done in the spring, some uh, spring seeding. There's um, shoulders, uh, dense graded gravel shoulders on Chesterfield and Audubon Road that they'll do next spring when they come back. Um, there was some signage, new signage that was going to be done as part of that contract and Warner Brothers does have a sub that will be installing signs uh, this week and next. So there's some, still some residual activity but pretty much uh, all the paving that people were waiting to be done is was done. Um, we were happy that we were able to get a lot of the areas that people were not too happy about and get those nice and small and taken care of. Uh, so Warner Brothers has shut down the black top? They're done here for the season, yeah. So where you, what, how's, how are you going to handle Bliss Street? What's that? Where, are you gonna, where gonna are you going to get that? We're going to okay. leave it as a gravel surface for the winter. For the winter? Yeah. Won't use that street. <laughs> It's probably a section you won't use. It's the the section that's um, out to the back. Door, yeah, yeah, the yeah. section in the back. Yeah. So it's mainly just residential. Yeah. So that's where the oldest. Sure, that would be the <coughs> oldest uh, pipe and so forth in that area. It's not the oldest pipe. The the, the interesting thing is I, I can't figure out why there's a there's a ductile iron pipe from about 1930 to 1930s pipe that was replaced in the 50s by a AC pipe. Mm -hmm. And the ductile iron pipe is probably in better condition than the AC pipe that is. So I don't you know, know why the change was made. The old Bliss Farm was at the far end toward the, I mean, the dead end at the end of Bliss Street. Yeah. So yeah. I just assume maybe that was where it was. Okay. Hey, Jim, when they do some of the paving up in, in Bay State, uh, one of the small streets, Winslow Ave, has a double yellow line going down it, which seems. <coughs> 
everyone's commenting about it, that it makes it seem like a road that you're allowed to travel faster on than you really should be. Yeah, it's actually, it's ironic that that's the impression because the, the, the use of double yellow lines is for the opposite reason. It's for traffic calming to get the better sense that the travel lanes are a little narrow, a little narrower and the decision was made in the paving contract this year to use double yellow lines. So you, you'll see on all the, some of the side streets that that's the case. We did have one, um, one resident came in to one of the commission meetings and had that very same comment that yeah. he thought it made it look like a raceway. And I think Ned said in that meeting that the idea is, is just the opposite, that it's, it's to, to make it seem like as a traffic calming element that this, the, the lanes are a little bit narrower and you should travel a little bit slower. Right. So that was the thinking I think behind it, but anyway. Got to educate. Um, yeah. So that's about that's about all on the, on the paving contract. Um, I guess on one related thing on paving, the, the board, we talked about the line painting contract at the last meeting, yeah. and I wasn't sure when the schedule was going to be. It was clear near the end of the season, and they came in right after that commission meeting, and they did all the they did all the line striping within a day or two. Yeah, right. not that night. Yeah. So they came in and were extremely, they gave us a great price, they were extremely efficient, they came in and they did it. Uh, they did the work, they did a very nice job, so we're real happy with it. I noticed that the markings for catch basins have been refreshed. Is that something? Our staff does. Our staff yes. does that? Yeah. Okay. That was really helpful because I struggled last year to find one mm -hmm. and the paint had faded so much it was hard to find it. Any comments on paving? Not? Yeah, just a quick question for, so um, the firm that we hired to uh, prioritize the paving uh, needs of the future uh, has completed their, their uh, has revised their, their uh, um, I guess maybe I'm asking, what's the most, what's the most current one? Is it, uh, <laughs> Is it something that was done this year? Or did, how much of a dent did would, it seem like we made a noticeable dent in the uh, in the p paving needs of the com uh, of the community? Mm -hmm. And I wondered how that affected uh, what might happen in the future. I know I understand that it's all related to the the funding from Chapter 90 and what the city puts in as well. But um, it's it's you know I think that maybe not enough credit has been has been given to the department for um, what was able to be done after such a long period of time it seemed where very little was being done mm -hmm. and, um, and you know I, I certainly heard uh, from a lot of people myself uh, that you know it was quite noticeable and so I'm just wondering you know did we get two years worth done it was a lot it was a significant amount of money more than what we had been accustomed to Right. And, the, and what the state provided added to that number is as you've explained so mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how do, how do we do as a percentage of the we make a, uh, a significant uh, dent in that this year it seemed like we did I can't put a uh, I can't put a like a sort of a, a monetary or a number value on it the amount of work that we've that we've completed is really outstanding and I think if you drive around the city you see mm -hmm. the results of all the hard work um, the support from the mayor's office with the, the local money that it's um, uh, matching the, the chapter 90 money that we get from the state. And we've been able to effectively work two years on very large contracts in excess of a million dollars to get the work done. And the streets that we've picked, are, they're streets that people travel, mm -hmm. right? And you really notice it. So, you know, we're proud of the things that we've been able to accomplish. Yeah. Um, the VHB. It's a v VHB is the company that helps yeah. us with the data management on the traffic and the streets conditions. We'll be reviewing. They just updated um, field inspections of they do a third of the streets, quarter of the streets. They inspect every year. We update that data in the model, and then it's and then it's our staff here at DPW that reviews the model and develop the backlog and the prioritization for the future year. But we have uh, I think just about an equivalent amount of money next year, right, for um, for paving. So it's another in excess of a million dollars, I think. We'll be in excess of a million. So you look at the work that we did this year and last year, and then you add, you, you look at it for another year, and these are things that people really start to notice. The streets in this city are substantially improved, yeah. and, and it shows. So you start to look at what's that mean in the backlog. And we always have this, you know, the model will give you the, the backlog for the whole city, but I think when you look at the streets that are traveled 
the most by people and you see that they're all new pavement, I mean it's a really significant improvement in the condition of the streets. So yeah, I, I just think heading into the winter when we're always getting a lot of criticism about the potholes which in, in inevitably show up as the mm. as the uh, as we get through the winter, it would seem as though we almost owe it to ourselves mm. to make the public more aware of what is obvious and just reinforce <coughs> the point that this has been something that uh, over the course of the last two or three years or whatever the wherever that funding started to become more uh, obviously available, I think it's important to, maybe it's through the mayor's office, I don't know how it should be done, but it seems to me as though it's something that needs to be addressed. We've, we've, we've made a significant dent in it, and it might be worth spending a little time to try to quantify what that dent is mm -hmm. so that people can know when, when the potholes show up next year that, we, you know, that we're on, on, uh, trying to get at it. Mm -hmm. It's best what funding will allow. Yeah, we'll be able to put some more figures to it as we start to look at the model through the winter, and we need to develop the, the new list for the contract for next yeah. year and get that word out in terms of the streets that we're yeah. we'll be working on. But so I just want to add that not only it's the quality of the jobs are very good, and the speed in which it got done and the ease of, of travel during the time they were being done was also yeah. remarkable. Yeah. So I just want to add that to what I mm. We've tried to work hard to make it as painless as we can for people, and it's it's a difficult, it's a very large contract, it's a lot of work, um, and there are definitely hiccups along the way, but I think it was well managed. We did work with the mayor's office to get information out to people when there'd be closures <coughs> in one lane or whatever. Yeah. We had a little bit of a, a rough road down on Pine Street in Florence that was a little, we had two projects down there which made that a little more challenging because we did a transmission main replacement. Um, and we did get a number of calls about that, and we appreciate people's patience with the, with the condition of that road. Okay. Move on to the uh, King Street work update. Haven't talked about this project in a little while. Um, we haven't forgotten about it. We do talk <coughs> to the neighbors in, uh, in the area where the flooding happened a couple of years ago occasionally to let them know that we said that we would work on long-term improvements to try to make uh, reduce the likelihood of flooding down there, and we, we have continued to work on it. Um, CDM um, was doing a large watershed model for us to model the King Street Brook water flow through the Barrett Street Marsh, across through Barrett Street, and then under Damon Road, and eventually all the way up to the Connecticut River. There's a long, it's a very interesting system that has many, many capacity issues. Um, but the only way that you can start to fix the immediate one that we know about is the one under the bike path that caused the flooding. But when you start looking at getting, trying to get more flow under the bike path, that water has to go somewhere. And you need to make sure if it's going somewhere, it's not creating a problem downstream. So CDM has done um, a very good job modeling this condition for us. And they looked at ways to improve the flooding that was happening there. And um, they've made a recommendation um, to us, and um, Doug McDonald and I had a number of conference calls with CDM to review alternatives. And they're, they're basically recommending um, that a berm be built. We're going to continue to rely on the 4x4 box culvert that goes under the bike path, many of you have seen. Um, but we're going to put a berm that will keep the water from flowing in the direction of State and Stoddard Street. So what it'll allow to do, if you can picture the pipe is like this, and right now, if we build a berm over here, the elevation of the water will get greater, and what that does is it allows more water to go through the current box culvert that we have, because there's sort of a greater hydraulic head driving the throw f through the pipe. So it's a really great solution because it's not too expensive, and um, it's relatively easy to permit, um, and it's eligible for FEMA funding. So we just submitted a FEMA grant application for um, $97,000 to help us with that improvement. So it'll make a big difference there. Um, we'd like to do more. Um, it's a very complicated problem. It'll be a lot more expensive in the end than 100 grand to fix, but um, we're happy with the improvement that will happen because of this work. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to get the grant money and then move forward through the winter with design and permitting. <coughs> I just had a comment about I wish that commissioners had been at Lori Sanders uh, historical discussion on Sunday well, I guess it's two Sundays ago now 
but you totally understand why the whole Barrett thing, Barrett Street problems arose because she just did an excellent job starting with the poor, poor farm and and it was and I know there were, I think Doug McDonald was there and maybe a couple other people I can't yeah. remember who I, was there because yeah. I was in a different place. Yeah. 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 I know you were there. Yeah. The, the the ones that she did earlier were. They speak to everything that we're oh, dealing I know. with. I mean, but this one was like so perfect about the whole King Street problem. Mm -hmm. so. Was it NCTV there? Do they tape it to you? I don't think in any of her, um, um, it was like a six Sunday um, right. lecture series. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think any more tape. I don't know though because um, once they moved to Smith and. Yeah. But they were extremely well attended too. Yeah, it was interesting. Approximately how high is the berm? Oh, David, you're, you're taking Jim Dossel's role with asking me the, <laughs> <laughs> you're asking me the technical questions. Um, well, but he yeah. has it at his fingertips. I so. do. It's about four and a half feet. Four and a half. Wow. Wow. Well, that's great. It is. And if you're holding a lot of water. Right. And I know you've walked down there. There's, a, there's sort of a pinch point oh, I know. Adjacent, well. to the, adjacent to the bike path, right? And that's where mm -hmm. that's where we want to build this. And there's a little, there's a little bit of permitting that will be necessary to do it, but it's not a large construction job. It'll probably cost as much to get the environmental permits as it will build it. Mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. It provides, you know, it's, it's great because it just provides more capacity through the culvert that we have. So, uh, next is uh, an update on the FEMA grant for the low lift pump station. So the low lift pump station is a water supply pump station at the Mountain Street Reservoir. It pumps water from the Mountain Street Reservoir up to the water treatment plant. Um, we had a, been talking to the board a long time about about the funding for this. We do actually have our own water enterprise fund money to pay for the generator. We became aware of a FEMA grant program that would, would most assuredly pay 80% of the cost of the generator. So we didn't go out to bid to buy the generator this year. Instead, we. Um, we filed for the FEMA grant application. We heard two weeks ago that we were recommended by the state to FEMA that we get the money for the it's award, great. so it's great. We have a site walk um, with officials from FEMA on, uh, I think, next week. So they want to take a look at the site and do some of the work that they need to do as part of their final recommendation. But it looks like we've we'll, we'll got a very good chance of getting the money, so it's outstanding. Questions on that one? But just a related question, just where are we at with the tree cutting? And how far along are we with all that around the reservoirs? Um, that's a good question. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've, I've seen this yeah. 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 It's very yeah. obvious. Yeah. No, but I mean, yeah. it, are we almost done with that? We're, we're a good way through. We, it was a number of different um, contracts okay. that were required to get the work done, both mm -hmm. down here in Roberts Meadow and then up by the treatment plant. It's not all done. Mm -hmm. um, some of it will be winter work. So mm -hmm. when the ground freezes, um, some of the work will be done then. But it's not complete yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm <coughs> going. I'm hoping it will be done this winter. Yeah. So we'll just get right there. Uh, next item is the flood control system update. Um, so we continue to work diligently on flood control, I think with the benefit of the funding that we received from the new stormwater flood control utility, we we wrapped up a project in the Connecticut River levee system to do vegetation control and um, removal and stabilization of the levee. That work was done by Kingsbury Companies out of Vermont. They did a very nice job um, doing that project. We've heard some feedback from from residents in that part of town that they're they're quite pleased. There was a lot of concern about the tree removal and. We tried to be sensitive to that, but at the end, it's a lot more park-like. A lot of the trees that the toe have been removed, and we had to do some seeding, and there was some erosion at the top of the levee, and we, rather than reseed that, we put in a compacted gravel base because we know a lot of people use it for recreational walking. So when you go out there, the views are beautiful, and people have, people have complimented the final product on that. So. It's nice to hear. There was a lot of concern about it, but when the project was done at the end, people were complimentary about what they see. I was actually surprised as well how beautiful at the very end how beautiful it turned out to be. The the, the views and everything are, are really terrific there. So 
that was a, uh, a success. The Corps is very happy that we completed that project as well. Not only is it pretty, but the Corps is happy. <coughs> pretty and functional. Um, we are wrapping up the other big contract that we signed for flood control system was a levy assessment work that was being done by the engineering firm of AECOM. So they were doing um, tow drain investigations, um, a review of levy penetrations for um, water sewer drain lines to go under the levy, the conditional assessment of those um, pipes to make sure they don't pose a risk to the levy. Um, they did a couple of other important parts of that project were um, the Sol Street drop structure. There's a dam at Sol Street that was constructed by the Corps as a means to reduce the velocity in the, in the flood control channel. Um, that needed to be inspected and that work has been complete and we have a report about it. And then the old Springfield Bridge, um, which was built as part of flood control originally, um, the bridge failed probably 20 years ago and a temporary bridge uh, was built over that about 20 years ago. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of concern that the original bridge, um, because it's actually in the floodway, if it fails, it, it, it poses an obstruction to the flow in the waterway. So the call was concerned that if it fails, what is the repercussion, what do we, the city need to do to make sure that the floodway will handle the flow it's designed to handle. We got an outstanding report from AECOM on it. It was one of the, it was like a very good bridge report. They can be a little dry, but, um, they did a very good job inspecting the bridge and they had a dive team out there looking at the piles for the original bridge and the condition under the water. Um, so we have a very thorough assessment. Um, there were recommendations in there that were made for further work that needs to be done. Um, so that we're getting a lot of the work that EECOM is doing is because it's an assessment project that results in a lot of recommendations for work that needs to be done. So we'll be talking shortly when, when all of the work is done about the recommendations that they're making, the last deliverable under their contract will be made by the end of the year. So we'll be able to pull everything together, what all the recommendations are, and have a discussion. Um, some of the things are quite expensive, so prioritizing them and working with the core in terms of how we get the things done that we need to do, we won't be able to afford to do everything in one year by any stretch. So it's a long-term um, certainly a long-term job for us to continue to make improvements over time. So with the, the core that we were on some sort of order or mandate to take some action by a time certain. Right. Uh, and we're operating within those. Um, you know, they've, they've given us some flexibility. We, we actually had missed um, a couple of dates that were stipulated a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but we worked so closely with them they can see exactly what we're doing and um, how rapidly we're taking care of things. I mean, we're, the city is viewed very favorably by the core because of how active we are in taking care of the things that, are, that we're identifying as being deficient. Mm -hmm. I mean, the flood wall, we talked about the Virgilio contract and the work that time bonded for us in the flood walls. Um, we've been very aggressive in taking care of the things that are, that are most important, the Connecticut River levy. So, um, you know, they have said that they do, they do call us as well, we, we keep them up to date, but they also call to make sure that we're getting things done. Um, they did an inspection earlier this year. They're getting ready to issue the results of their inspection, and in the results of their inspection, that's where they have the dates, right? So before they <coughs> sent it, they, we just had a conference call with them a few days ago where they were saying, okay, well, where exactly is the city with all these things that you're doing? And they want to take that into account as they put um, schedules for us, you know, as we move forward. So they've been, they're, they're working with us, I guess, is the best way to say it. They realize there's some limitations in funding, and, um, but we're not ignoring anything. I mean, compared to some other flood cities that have flood control, you know, we do a good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So just, to, to, if I could, uh, Jim, um, and, I, and I know I've asked this in the general way before, going back to the, to the water treatment plant and the, um, and the equalization tank repair, and the, now the low lift pump station, which we talked about before, the generator and so forth. Is there a lesson to be learned? I mean, here, here, here we had a presentation recently about the wastewater treatment plant needs of the community and what we're facing. And how much was it? Was it $35 million for the water treatment? First five years was 31. Yeah. So, I mean, 
it just seems odd to me that we would be talking about the kind of things that we're talking about in terms of need of repair and replacement or supplemental needs that the, the, that the plant may be able to make better use of for the purposes that it was intended and not have had to have had that have been something that was addressed more directly and appropriately at the time when, when the plant was built. Uh, and I'm not, it's, that's done. <coughs> you, you've, you've explained that it isn't uh, something that we can go back and try to recover anything. But the lesson that might be learned is if we're going to be going out to the community here, which we, it seems as though we are, again, talking about the wastewater treatment plant in the near future. I think we've got to, we've got to look at it in a way that maybe we have to approach it differently with respect to the warranty times or the, or the kind of design. I know we're, I, and I'm not familiar enough with it, have not having been part of the process at the time. And I respect the fact that it's, it's something well beyond my technical expertise to be able to even properly ask a question. But it does seem a little silly to me in the whole scheme of things that we would be talking about these needs for the water treatment plant um, being, you know, whether it's a, whether it's a FEMA grant or, or whatever it is that we might be able to make, have access to, to be able to solve this problem. Um, it still seems to me as though these aren't things that we should necessarily be having to address with a, with a plant that is was so costly and so relatively new. Yeah, I mean, like like most things, there's no there's no simple response to it. You really have to drill down into the complexity of it. When you're building a twenty six million dollar facility, the fact that you may have an eighty thousand dollar repair six years down the road, these are the sorts of things that happen. But you you can look at um, decisions that were made when the plant was built, talking about the generator, I think the, the idea, I think, I wasn't here when the, it was decided not to have a generator at the lower pump station, but I think what was discussed at the time was that um, as a cost-cutting measure, it wouldn't be necessary for the city to have a generator at the Mountain Street Reservoir because the water from the Ryan Reservoir flows by gravity to the plant. So why, if there's an emergency, you could just rely on gravity. But what we found during Irene was that because of all the erosion in the watershed, the quality of the water in the Rhine Reservoir got so bad that it was very difficult to treat. So there was a there was definitely a problem during Irene where we had to shut the water off from Ryan and we had to switch to Mountain Street. So at that point, we were only relying on uh, the pump system to get the water to um, to the treatment plant, and we did lose power, but we didn't lose power long enough for it to be a problem where we were risking water supply to the city. But what it, what it identified was there was, a, there was a little bit of a, there was a risk there that had been considered when the decision was made to build the plant and the thinking about that risk, at least in my opinion, the thinking about that risk after Irene was, well, if it's going to happen, it could have happened again. And you, you wouldn't, you'd want to have enough redundancy in the system so that if there's a problem, the city will continue to have water. And we felt like if we had another situation with Irene where we had to rely on the pump station, and we didn't have power, there was a chance there wouldn't be enough water for the city while the power was out. So in that case, you'll look at 400,000 and you're like, well, it's probably a good investment. We talked about it at the board level extensively. Terry, I think Terry Colleen, the previous chair, um, he drilled us about, we had a lot of discussions about whether it was necessary and um, the questions of risk and redundancy in a water supplier, you know, they're pretty serious. But at the time, the decision was made, it was, pro I think it was, a a sound decision. I think there was no way that the director at the time or the people involved, the superintendent at the time, could have predicted um, what was going to happen on Irene and that we would have that problem because we just didn't have that. That had never occurred. The city didn't have that experience. They would no, have, have no reason to expect that the, that the Ryan Reservoir would have such poor water quality during a hurricane like that. So that's one thing. And then I could go on about some of these things forever. Eventually, it probably. Well, I'm not looking. I, 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 I'm not trying to back up on that. I, I, I'm just I'm a general talking. comment on the on the, all the repair issues that you're <coughs> talking about because it, it has been a concern. I'm sure to everybody in this room that we've started repairing things much sooner than we thought we should have to. But it, at least my experience is the industry standard for a warranty period is a year. Yeah, I guess I. I, I and, and and I think there are probably contractual ways you can extend that. But I suspect that in extending it, 
someone's going to someone's going to pay for the risk of taking that on. Yeah. And so we may end up paying more. We probably wouldn't know how much more, but we probably pay more to get five years instead of one year. I'm not sure we'd ever ask for ten years yeah. on mechanical equipment and yeah. doors and roofs. But spalling of an equalization tank. I, it's, I mean, that's way to too me soon. To good Lord. I right. Mean, you think the concrete would last much longer, yeah. especially in an environment. That, that doesn't have a hazardous nature to it. I mean, right. I mean, the other the other issue about the treatment plant was when you have a project that's that large, the city had one inspector. The city, the previous director wanted one inspector on the job, and it's a twenty-six million dollar project. It's a very large project. There's a lot of things going on, and sometimes there's more going on than one person can see. And we saw this with. Um, we, we had a problem uh, shortly after construction with the operation of the lagoons, which some of the, the board members that have been here for a while will remember this. And the problem with the lagoons is that they weren't constructed according to specification, in part because we didn't have, the city didn't have enough inspectors on site to see that the site work guy was doing something over here and someone was working on concrete tank or equipment installation within the building, so there were multiple things going on beyond that which one person could see. So it's always been my opinion, and maybe because I come from the engineering world, that having an engineering inspector, um, you want as many as is necessary, and it's short money to think that you can get away with a big project with only one person, because you're always going to run into this being, it, it's not enough on a really big job. In a water treatment plant, you know, if, if you look at a water plant, you know, it, we probably could have had two people, or, yeah. and at the end of the day, when we did the repair, we ended up paying for the inspection that AECOM had to do to, to fix the repair. So it was, that didn't cost us, I mean, it, it did theoretically. I, I asked the question in the context of the lesson to be learned right. going forward right. with the wastewater treatment plant. And right. maybe that's what we, maybe that's the lesson. Right. You know, maybe we've, we've learned it. And, right. But I mean, it's still something that we're going to be having to defend to, to the people who are going to be uh, asked to, you know, pay for this. Right. And so. You know, mm -hmm. it's best that we, I think, don't make decisions like that going forward again. Because if it's, if uh, something like this is, it's very annoying. I mean, you don't have to peel away at the end of very much here to get, to get pretty frustrated by mm -hmm. the fact that it's occurring. And if you think of it in the context of the amount of money spent, right. yeah, we and, and the amount of time that we needed to have mm -hmm. that. I mean, and, the, and what went into what preceded that in terms of debate within the community, and and you know, so yeah. we owe it to ourselves to do it better. Seems to me. Somehow, if it's an extra inspector, let's keep that in mind. Yeah. Try to try to live and learn and do the best we can. But it, these things are difficult. They're not fun to bring in front of the to the bring in front of the commission. We don't like to. Yeah. Know, our response is our response to some of these things is just like yours. And we yeah. try to do the best we yeah. can with it. I totally agree with it, what you've been saying. But I do know that you did do due diligence in terms of trying to perceive and get money back on the generator, for instance, and, right. and several items. So right. it's just not everything is covered. Mm -hmm. uh, last item on the agenda is the Bridge Street Cemetery update. Just a short update on Bridge Street. We have a committee that we pulled together from, from our, that's help, helping provide guidance in the preparation of the preservation plan um, that's being done by Martha Lyon, who's a local uh, landscape architect. The project is going very well. We had our first public input meeting about, about a month ago or so. It was the day after this meeting. Yeah. So, I don't know, so what, maybe about a month ago. Yeah. Um, we had a pretty it's good a turnout. We had, a, we had a working session with the people that showed up. Um, to get ideas about um, pros and cons of the cemetery, the things that people would like to see, what their what their dreams are for improvements at the cemetery. Um, it's a very good process. I just love it. It was very similar to what we did for Pulaski Park. A lot of people came out, and you know, it's really great to hear what people's ideas are, what they like about the cemetery, and what they you know what they would like to see for improvements. And Martha uh, Lyon is taking all of that input and consolidating it. Um, as, she as she prepares the preservation plan and looks at prioritizing what the improvements are going to be. So um, it's going very well. We have a, we have a, a committee meeting Monday night mm -hmm. that's posted and open to the public. And, oh, yeah, the 7th. Um, so it's been very good. It's been a very, uh, you know, it's just an interesting project. We're starting to see some deliverables from Martha. The history of the cemetery is amazing. Mm -hmm. 
some of the old um, stones and mausoleums and different things. There was a structural engineer that did some assessment of some of the structures at the cemetery. It's the most fascinating information which uh, people may be, may be interested in seeing and reading and we're working to get some of those final documents up on the website so people can take a look. But um, she's done a great job. It's just been really fascinating, interesting piece of city history. Good. Any comments on that? Just to follow up, um, I have a couple things. One is, I asked this at the last meeting since uh, about West Farms, if you have any updates on anything happening on that. The research and work to move us into a CPA application for West Farms and, the, and another, um, wanted to do two, two right. projects. I, um, I don't have anything new to report on that. Um, we can do a CPA application for it. It'd be pretty straightforward to prepare. Um, when I talked to Martha Lyon the last time, she indicated that because the cemetery is much smaller, that the cost of doing a preservation plan will be a lot less. So I think that's encouraging. I, I need to reach out to her to get a better idea of what the budget would be, mm -hmm. and then decide how to proceed. Okay. But we could we could submit an application in the next CPA round. Yeah, Richard su suggested putting the two last two cemeteries together. Right. Yeah, it makes, it, it makes it's a good idea. Right. The other thing is, uh, I, this was on my mind in the, the conversation, the discussion you were just having, which I thought was my earlier question, wasn't it? About, yes, it was. Thank yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> um, was about capacity. I, I, you know, I'm new to this committee. Um, how many staff do you have working with you in engineering? We have um, nine, including yourself. Uh, we have a transportation engineer, we have mm -hmm. three assistant engineers, we have a senior engineer, and we have a stormwater manager, a, s a wetland scientist, and a GIS mm -hmm. professional. Okay, and, and where I'm asking about this, and I'm sure I'm not the first to bring this up at a meeting, but um, whether you have the capacity that you'd like to have in order to perhaps save some money on some of this outsourcing and contracting for engineering services. Yeah, we have, we have an outstanding staff um, who's extremely capable. And what we've been seeing, what we've been seeing in the last uh, couple of years in recent times is that the city is investing a lot in infrastructure, mm -hmm. and it, when it reaches beyond our capacity to manage it, and then that's when we do the super contracts. Right? Um, we haven't thought about adding any additional staff. We actually, for a city our size, we actually have a fairly robust <coughs> engineering division. Mm -hmm. um, I would hesitate to make the case that we need to add um, long-term engineering staff. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we do as much as we can, and then when it reaches the point where we feel like we're not being effective, then we, that's when we hire people, mm -hmm. the consultants to help us, or independent engineers to, to help us. So. Yeah. I just wanted to know whether you felt we had enough or you would need, feel it would be useful to have more in house capacity. I feel That's like we question. have, I do feel like we have enough. Okay. Um, because I worry about, I, I worried about this when I was a consultant too. You, you always worry about bringing on new staff that you, you're saying you'll need for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the last couple of years, um, it's just been, with the investment in, in the streets and some of the work that we've started to take on the water side, um, it's just a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, a lot more work and people are very busy. Mm -hmm. And it's only been the last couple of years. I think if, as we go on, if there's still this level of investment, maybe we'll look at adding people. And a, you know, a good example is on a water line job, that's something that we can design in house. We have the expertise to do it. We've done them many times. But when we get really busy, we don't have the time to do them. Mm -hmm. And then we hire a consultant like Tate and Howard, like Bliss Street. Tate and Howard did that design for us. That was something that we could, were fully capable of doing. But at the moment, we don't have the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's a real balancing act in terms of how, you know, we try to manage things. Um, and I, so I'm, I'm hesitant. I think there's a lot of concern about the rates, um, the investment at the wastewater treatment plant. There's going to be a lot of um, money invested at the wastewater plant, which is a building project which is beyond the expertise of the staff mm -hmm. that we have here. So we'll hire a consultant to help us with that and, and, and a, an owner's project manager probably to help mm -hmm. manage that aspect of it. And I think that may, since a lot of our investment will be going to a plant that will, will be managed by an engineering firm, 
that may open up more time with our staff to do things like street design, mm -hmm. utility design. So you can see every year, you know, you look at the balance. I haven't felt, I mean, Ned and I have not talked about adding an engineer. We added an assistant engineer <coughs> um, two years ago. So we did add a person and we saw the work coming up and we found a very great um, person yeah. who's working on the, with us. But since that time, two years ago, we haven't okay. started talking about it. But, yeah. It's a good question. Pat is constantly asking a very similar question about you know, how much we can do or do we have enough help. Or maybe it's Mike. I think Mike is always, you're always asking. I'm Are worried they, about it. I you, remember you, a few meetings ago, when you, I think it was when you took bids for the levy work, you did that in-house. Right. And we talked about the engineering fees that were saved by doing it in-house. And it was mm -hmm. a significant amount of money. I forget the numbers, but so it's, it's on, I think, everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. But as Jim says, when you, op when you try to create a new position, especially in the public right. sector, you right. need to be prepared to yeah. keep it for a long time. Well, we're sort of waiting for that organizational development report. That's correct. What the status is of that. Uh, last time I knew it was, um, I'd seen a kind of a final draft of it. I didn't see the um, final recommendations that came out of it either. Mm -hmm. So I know the mayor's waiting for the report also. That's mm -hmm. my understanding. Who did the report? The Matrix Consulting Group. Mm -hmm. And that's like a management and staffing capacity study, or what? what is it? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's an adequate yeah. way to characterize okay. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of the department, <coughs> just the department. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that completes the agenda. We can go around the table and see if commissioners have anything else to talk about. I'll talk to you. You've covered <laughs> it. I just want to thank you all for <laughs> the fabulous 15 plus years I've had here. Great. So I'm looking forward to the next next community to serve them just as well. Thank well, you. Thank you. I can't say anything else because <laughs> BJ will kick me if I, <laughs> if I don't want anything. Um, I just wanted to ask about our next meeting. Excellent question. Um, I was wondering if we could get back to the second Wednesday. We've jumped around this fall, but yeah. I think it, it certainly would help me to get back to a consistent day. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that would be January 13th. That's okay. I do agree. I think it's important to stay consistent so we can plan our agenda. So right. That's right. MJ? Okay. David? Okay. Go. Okay. Um, Mike? Mike. Nothing else. Take a motion to adjourn. Come on. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>